It was all hands on deck before setting sail on a hunt that's been three decades coming. These are the men that will bring fresh local whales back to Japan. Harpoons are ready and so are the crew. Bigger and fatter whales means better meat. We'll transport it as fresh as possible so that old people can taste it and remember the old days. Communities like Kushiro stand ready to cash in as Japan defies international outcry and pushes ahead with the practice. To send off commercial whaling ships for the first time in 31 years is very emotional for those of us who've been working for the resumption. I'm happy from the bottom of my heart. In recent years, Japan has got its fill of whale meat through scientific hunts, but locals say it never produced enough. Many traditionalists in Japan say whaling is more of culture than conservation, though not everyone agrees. I've never eaten whale before. I don't know if it tastes good, so I'm wondering if I should buy them or not. I don't really need to eat whale. At another major whaling town, this time in Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's own constituency, there were celebrations as the crew set off in a bid to help revive Japan's controversial love affair with whale meat. Let's bring in Nicholas Entrup from Ocean Care, a marine conservation organization in Vienna. Nicholas, thank you for joining us. We should mention that Japan has still been whaling over the last few decades, but officially for uh, scientific purposes. So what does today really change? Okay, first of all, the name of the whale hunt changed from scientific to commercial because actually the vessels they're using are the same vessels they have been using. However, there is a huge significant difference now is Japan has left the International Whaling Commission. They've left the institution that is responsible to regulate whaling and that, that has decided in 1982 whale species should no longer be hunted for commercial purposes. Japan hasn't got what it wanted over the years, so it left this institution and is now whaling outside the international body that should regulate it. So that's quite a devastating situation. What has happened over the last 30 years? Did the whale population recover sufficiently in that time? It's a very good question because some whale species and some whale populations did recover actually, but not those we are talking about in Japan. I'll give you an example. The most abundant whale species in those waters is the minke whale in the Northwest Pacific. However, science tells us that the minke whale is divided in certain populations and one population is highly endangered. So when a whaler approaches a minke whale on the water and kills it, it cannot differentiate, is this an endangered whale or is this a non endangered whale. It's death and you finally will, will find out about the genetics. So very often you find endangered whales or whales from endangered populations on the market and that's quite an appalling situation. Nicholas, the Japanese perspective here is that this is a long-running tradition, a part of their culture. Can you understand that perspective? No, I don't, because actually I think I think it's it's kind of a, a, a PR rhetoric, because the whaling we see today is kind of a product of the Second World War, when there was a, a need in terms of, of providing protein to the people. But what we've seen over the past decades has been a, de a significant decrease in interest, in demand, etc. So what what the, the, the whaling, um, the, the, the pro-whalers are facing is a non-existing market. And what will happen now is that the, the government will spend lots of money to create an artificial demand. You know, they will promote whale products in schools, etc. And okay. I think that's really the wrong way to go. What we would like to see is a phase out of that, of that activity. But Nicholas, why would the Japanese government want to do that? Create an artificial market where, where there isn't one? Well, it's it's very simple because they've told the people for 30 years that this is what they want and this is, you know, the, and, and they gave it a kind of an artificial cultural identity, which we believe doesn't really exist in that respect. You know, ask the young people, the, 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 long, the young citizens in Japan, you will not see much support for it. And I think the big question is, on one hand, will the Japanese public, you know, give a blind eye to whale products? And I really hope so. But the other thing is, Japan has left the international negotiation table, and that's a really worrying trend. The U.S. Mm -hmm. left the Paris Agreement, Japan leaves the Whaling Commission. What's next?
All right, Nicholas Entrup from Ocean Care in Vienna. Thank you very much for your analysis. Okay, I thank you for the invitation. Ciao.